Hi, and welcome to another Beach with a Coin video. Today we are going to do a sanding wrap. We were also going to do a poultice with this, but unfortunately the poultice is frozen solid, so we're just going to have to do the sanding wrap. Um, and then I will explain how the poultice would then be applied afterwards. So, for this, you're going to need some pillow wraps. They just look like this. So I'm just going to be wrapping her front legs for the demonstration. So you only need two, but if you were to do all four legs, then you would need four. You also need the standing wrap. So this is a little bit um, different from a polo because it's not fleece. It's got a little bit of a stretch, but not too much. So you want to make sure that you have them already wrapped up and ready to go so that they're easy to unroll and wrap onto their leg. So to show you how to do that, I left this one undone. So we've got the rougher Velcro right here and the softer Velcro here on the opposite side. So to wrap it, we're gonna take the soft Velcro and attach it to the rough Velcro like this. So that it's being kind of like folded over top of it. So we're rolling in towards the rough Velcro. So it's like this. And then you're gonna roll it nice and tight and even. So we have to make sure that we wrap it up this way so that when we go to wrap our horse's leg, when we get to the end, the Velcro is facing out the proper way. So there's a couple of reasons why we may need to wrap our horse's legs. Uh, they may be standing in their stalls or in a trailer for a long time and they need a little extra support. Um, you never want to leave wraps on for longer than 12 hours. You always need to switch them. Even if you have like a poultice or a sweat underneath. Now, if you have a sweat underneath, I recommend ch like checking it or changing it every more like six hours. Um, but again, um, get confirmation with your vet or your REMT before doing any of these to see if your horse even needs it at all. Um, so we may have to do it because they're standing, so we're trying to stop them from getting fluid in their legs, so stop them from stocking up, which Cleo does if she is stuck inside for long periods of time, just because the circulation isn't moving, so her fluid kind of just gets stuck in her leg, because it's got to pump that fluid up such a long distance up to the rest of her body. Sometimes it doesn't always quite make it. And that's when like even compression socks for people are really beneficial. Um, some other reasons we may need to standing wrap our horse is because they've gotten an injury and they have some swelling and inflammation. So you're doing like a poultice wrap combination to help bring that swelling down because the purpose is to a poultice is to draw out swelling and inflammation and toxins in the skin and in, in the muscles. So poultice is also a great thing to use after a workout. So when I was training like really hard in dressage and eventing, I would pull this after every single ride. I wouldn't always wrap unless I felt that I needed to. Sometimes I would just put the poultice on, leave it on overnight or until it dried, just to help draw out the like toxins in the muscles and help them function better and kind of rehydrate them, relax them. There's other, depending on what poultice you get, there are sometimes other um, medicational properties in them that have other functions, um, but mainly the mud decreases inflammation in the poultice. So that is the purpose for that. Uh, so we always want to make sure that we wrap both front legs or both hind legs. We never want to leave them uneven. Um, but of course you can wrap the front legs without wrapping the hind legs, or you can wrap the hind legs without wrapping the front legs. The only thing you have to make sure is that you're wrapping both front legs or both back legs, depending on um, which legs you need to be wrapping. But say you've got an inflammation on one right front and then the left hind, you would then also need to wrap the opposite front and the opposite hind so that they're even and not left unbalanced. Okay, so we're gonna get started with the wraps. So for the pillow wraps, um, I like to have them rolled up ahead of time. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to roll those up. It doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, I think there are some types that also have like Velcro attachments within them. So if you had those and you would wrap it the same way you would wrap this. So I'm going to 
wrap the other one up as well. So that we are ready to go. So if we were doing a poultice, we would first make sure we have all of that ready and then we'd go and do the poultice. So depending on where the swelling is, we would just put the poultice over that area of the swelling. So that's typically the tendons. It's typically this area here that gets the swelling and needs the poultice. So you would apply the poultice evenly so that you can't see any fur or skin underneath. So you make sure it's even all the way around. Then you would apply a wet paper towel um, in between that and the pillow wrap just to help retain some of the moisture. So if we were to pull this, that is how it would go. And then you would also put a plastic bag around that again as well to help keep the moisture in. So we're going to take the pillow wrap starting on the inside of her leg. This on the inside of her cannon bone. I don't want to start back behind the tendon because I don't want to leave the fold over there because that can be a little bit uncomfortable for them. So kind of in that little divot of bone there, we're wrapping from the medial side of the leg around the front, move to the lateral side, around the back of the leg, keeping it snug but not too tight. And there's our standing pillow wrap done. The next we take our standing wrap. Oops, I have to redo that. So I'm gonna start with the end on the inside of her cannon bone as well. And I'm gonna wrap it this way around so that this end is facing out. It just makes it easier to pull it around versus if I was to go this way it would be a lot harder to pull it around and also then the Velcro would end up on the wrong side at the end. So we need to make sure we're wrapping it this way around. So we're gonna fix the pillow wrap. Also wanna make sure their legs are clean and dry and the pillow wraps are clean and dry. Just gonna rewrap that. But also, don't do what I did and make sure you have your standing wrap ready to go so that you don't have to leave them and then risk all your hard work I'm doing. So again, we're wrapping that around from the medial side of her leg to the lateral side, around the front, and behind the back. Taking her standing wrap. End of it on the inside of that cannon bone as well. And at the same time, you're going to kind of use your hand on the back of their leg to stabilize the pillow wrap so it doesn't fall down as you start to wrap. So standing wrap around, so you're starting at the top of the leg, just below their carpus. Again, you want to make sure that they can bend their knee with this wrap on still. So we don't need to be doing any immobilizations. We're not making a cast, that's a bet strong. So we're wrapping it down. We're just moving about halfway down the wrap. As we're going. So we're letting half of the previous wrap show. As we move down the leg, keeping it evenly, pressured all the way down. And then we're going to come and scoop underneath her fetlock. This is to support those tendons underneath. And then we're going to bring it up so that we can create a little bit of a V at the front. Continuing to wrap back up the leg now and you should be coming to your velcro as you reach the top of the leg so that it is even all the way down you also want to make sure that you have a bit of pillow sticking out of the top and at the bottom and that is our pillow wrap these are also really useful if we need to protect them from bumping themselves so that they don't re-injure a previous existing injury so I'm going to bring this a little bit closer so you can really see that loop around the bottom of her set lock. Okay, so we're on this side now, bringing that pillow wrap 
on the inside of her cannon bone, bringing it around the front of the leg, to the back, keeping it snug and even, not too tight, so you want to be able to fit like a finger underneath, we don't want it so tight that we can't get anything underneath because then we're going to cut their circulation off and that's not going to be very effective for what we're trying to accomplish. So we've got the pillow wrap wrapped. Next, going to take the standing wrap here. Again, making sure the flat side is against her leg. Starting at the inside of her cannon bone again. Wrapping around the front of her leg, just below her knee. Around the back of her tendons. Moving down. leaving half of the previous wrap showing right here like that. Keep moving down. And then as you come to that fat lock, we're going to scoop it, bring it up, creating that V at the front, working all the way back up. So keeping it even as you go up, you should be reaching the end of the Velcro when you get back up to the top of where you started to wrap. So it's even all the way down. So as you can see, we've got her fetlock supported here. So we have her fetlock supported just below her knee. So wrapped evenly, nothing sagging, nothing sticking out. It's not a very large V at the front, but it's there a little bit just to allow for a little bit more range of motion in that space. The Velcro is on the outside so that it can't be rubbed against and pulled off. Um, if you want, you can use a small piece of duct tape just on this little part. You don't want to wrap it all the way around the leg uh, in case the leg inflames more. Um, you can use that piece of duct tape to help keep that piece of Velcro secure so that the horse can't pull it off depending on what your horse is like. I've never had any issues with them really coming off like I've even turned her out in the field with the wraps on and she's been fine. So if you were to do the hind legs, you'd do this exact same thing. Um, so yeah, remove every 12 hours. Don't leave it any on any longer than that. And please watch our cross tie safety video as well, uh, just to learn how to properly and safely work with your horse in the cross ties. Um, we we'll always wanna make sure that we are standing Next to them, never in front or behind their limbs or underneath them. We never want to crouch onto our knees or sit on our butts on the ground. We always want to stay up on our feet so that we can move if we need to. Safety, safety, safety. Very, very important. Um, we also need to make sure we're paying attention to our horses, making sure that they're comfortable and happy. Um, if you haven't used poultice before on your horse, I recommend doing a patch test. So a patch test is you just apply a small amount. Uh, leave it on until it dries and then remove it make sure there was no reaction and then you can apply the full amount um, some other fun facts I'd like to share about poultice is that you can like put it anywhere so you can put it on their backs if they've got a sore back to help remove the toxins in their muscles after a workout help decrease that muscle soreness so you can put that poultice right onto their back and then after it's dry it just You just brush it off with your curry comb, or you can give them a bath, whichever you prefer. It's really, really great stuff to help decrease inflammation in a natural um, and healthy way. Um, I typically apply it with gloves on just to keep myself clean. Um, there's also like a couple different types of poultices. Sometimes it comes like already in a wrap and you just add um, hot water to it and then apply it. 
um, like as a wound dressing. Uh, this one here is a hoof poultice. This is from when uh, Cleo actually pulled her shoe off and stepped back down onto it and impaled her foot with the um, shoe's nail. Uh, so I had to wrap and poultice her hoof to, pel um, to prevent that from getting infected and from causing any issues. Thankfully, she was fine because it happened right in front of me. I didn't even let the foot touch the ground because as soon as it happened, she was favoring it. I got a hammer and all the tools I needed to quickly remove it, and then I had her wrapped right away. Um, so, yeah, this can be used like um, in hot or cold water. You would apply this one to the bottom of the foot, and then you would wrap with uh, duct tape and vet wrap to help keep any um, bacteria out, draw out the inflammation. So this one already comes with like a plastic backing and then one side is um, the cloth. I don't want to open it because I don't want to risk it going bad. Um, so yeah, one side has plastic on it and the other side has the poultice and some cotton. So also if they were to get a hoof puncture, you'd want to have that padding underneath to help support their foot and like decrease the pain to kind of put more of cushioning there. There's that kind of poultice. And then I've got this one here. This is a wrap poultice. Kind of same idea. You would just wrap it around the leg, either in hot or cold water. So for the paper that you put around the poultice, I usually just cut up a brown paper bag. So you can really like use paper towels. Um, one of the dressage barns that I used to work at, we would use like those blue shop cloths. Those were actually amazing. I uh, kept the moisture in really, really well. And they were like the perfect size and shape. You just pull them off like a paper towel, give them a quick dampen. You wrap it around same direction as you wrap the standing wraps from the inside of the cannon bone around the front to the back of the tendons. So thank you very much for coming and viewing another video. We're super excited to be doing this. We're having lots and lots of fun. Uh, you now know how to poultice your horse. So again, you can do this just every day after exercise just to help uh, draw out the toxins after exercise or if your horse has had an injury to decrease inflammation. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please be safe as you practice these new skills. And we look forward to seeing you at the next video. Thanks. Bye.